kind of feels like the year is just flying by. I mean, it's already June. I actually didn't wear a mask today and that was pretty awesome. So we're going into the summer and that's kind of a positive thing because there's less restrictions. People can go out more and have a good time. We're also going to be going to the movies and then on the rainy days, I suppose we're going to be staying in, playing some video games, watching some Netflix and other streaming services as we do. For this video, guys, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 releases in media that I'm excited for. I'm not limiting it to just TV, film, or gaming as I like all three. And I don't think that there's really enough in either of the mediums to kind of make its own video. So I decided to just have some fun and combine them all. So yeah, let's kind of just dive right in here and look at what's coming out in the month of June. All right, guys, we're going to kick things off with a film called The Ice Road. It is coming out at the ending of the month exclusively to Netflix. This is a film that is starring Liam Neeson, and uh, it's just another action adventure film starring Liam Neeson, I suppose. He's in quite a few movies that are just very fun and sort of just, you know, full of action and stuff, and I'm always about it. I enjoy him. We have Lawrence Fishburne starring right aside Neeson, and this is a movie about some miners after what seems to be a collapse. And then uh, there's pretty much like this whole rescue mission on the ice road, as the title would suggest. It looks pretty exciting. I just saw the trailer the other day. Like I said, Netflix movie. Netflix pretty much has a really, really great track record. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we got going on with this movie when it comes out later this month. All right. And then coming in at number nine, we have a film called Luca. This is a new Disney Pixar movie. It looks very delightful. It is set in the Italian Riviera. And this animated movie. It looks like sort of a coming of age story, something that Disney sort of has shown their expertise at many times, as well as just their expertise in animation, of course, and making people feel something from their fun, family friendly movies. I saw that this movie looks like a really fun summer kind of vibe to it. I know that in reading the synopsis, you see mentioning of gelato and pasta and scooter rides and it's like I said summer vibes you've got these two best friends and it looks like a really creative fun Pixar movie sort of just like I said what you expect I'm really looking forward to seeing this movie it's coming out mid-month and I think that Luke is going to be another delight another tearjerker and a great family movie to uh, finally go see in theaters maybe okay so taking the eighth place on my list is the second season to evil this CBS show is something that I kind of feel like went under the radar for a lot of people, but if you watched it, you probably know that it was fun. It was uh, creepy and just a really cool show about the uh, supernatural and about evil, as the title would suggest. It was a clash between some views on religion and also on science and whether or not there really are evil spirits and whatnot. And there were some exorcisms and stuff. There was a lot of church stuff. It was starring some pretty good talents and the three main characters had a really fun dynamic. Not quite like a Ghostbusters vibe, but like they were always uh, solving some cases and the church had their own perspectives in it and stuff. The show is interesting. It's fun. It, it uh, is a show that I think you should totally go check out and I'm looking forward to season two. I actually was pleasantly surprised in kind of preparing for this video to find out that this season is coming this month i wasn't even aware of that so yeah like i said go check that show if you haven't out already it's got some cool stuff going on with demons within and i i really enjoyed it so i'm looking forward to the second season that is evil and then we have the hitman's wife's bodyguard coming in at number seven on my list so this film is a sequel to the really fun movie starring salma hayek samuel L. jackson and ryan reynolds three talents that i certainly am all about being on screen together i'm looking forward to seeing a follow-up that movie was really fun if you guys haven't seen it, I think that you'd probably enjoy it if you like those actors. And uh, it's like a fun action movie. It doesn't take itself too, too seriously, but there's a good dynamic with the characters and you literally, it's about a hitman having a bodyguard. Uh, there's a lot of good jokes and stuff. And I'm looking forward to seeing this sequel where you pretty much get to see some more action with them and sort of a, a follow up a few years later in another instance where you're going to need some protection and a bodyguard. Okay. And then coming in at number six on my list is the movie In the Heights. This was one of those films that was supposed to be out last year, but then the pandemic hit and it's been delayed. So it is coming out. It should be out June 11th. It looks like a really uh, heartfelt, kind of inspiring, moving 
very fun. You know, it's a musical. It looks like a really good time. I'm actually pretty excited for it. It doesn't exactly, at first glance, seem like a film that I'd be putting on this list, but the first trailer kind of had my interest. You know, wouldn't you know it, I'm sitting here talking about how I'm actually really excited to see this movie. I think it looks really good. We've got this really nice story, uh, pretty much about a guy who's closing a store that has a lot to do with his uh, culture from the Dominican Republic. He's got some fortune, and it looks like it's a story that's going to be talking about kind of ranks or riches uh, going from nothing to something in a way. I think it's going to have a lot of uh, good storytelling that is very heartfelt. I think it's going to have a lot to do with, um, you know, class and the divide and stuff and finding yourself. It's a it's going to be a good vibe overall. I'm looking forward to seeing In the Heights. So one of my favorite shows on Netflix is Tuca and Birdie, and it got canceled a couple of years ago, which was pretty disappointing because this show coming from the creators of BoJack Horseman, like it looked very much like BoJack. Uh, it was just like a really fun show that had an impressive uh, dynamic between these two women who were birds. It's an animated series uh, for the uninitiated. Tuca and Birdie had a pretty strong story about uh, women going through relationships with men, with each other as their friends, moving out, finding a job, finding a career path, you know, moving on into the adult world and stuff like that, family and all. It was actually pretty moving and it's also very funny. I got tons of good laughs out of them. Tiffany Haddish and Ali Wong are both great talents to play as the uh, titular duo of birds in their 30s, trying to just uh, find their, you know, find their way. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of this buddy comedy kind of show. Like I said, it was very disappointing to know that the show got canceled, but it is, uh, it's pretty good to see Adult Swim bringing it back. So it's coming out this month. And from one animated series to another, let's talk about Rick and Morty. I'm so happy to know that these guys are still on a roll with this show. Rick and Morty has not lost its quality. It's funny. I remember like a few years back having never even seen Rick and Morty season one when the first three seasons were already available. And like my, my friends and people I know were telling me how good it is. And then, you know, upon checking it out, finally, I saw the hype. I saw the appeal. I love the meta comedy. I love the uh, ridiculous sci-fi stuff, crazy things happening all the time. The adventures are just wild. Very, very memorable characters, memorable moments dirty humor, dark humor, uh, sarcastic, clever writing. It's great. I, I really enjoy Rick and Morty. Season five coming out. I actually, uh, like at the time of recording, haven't even watched a trailer, but you'll be seeing some footage of it, of course, naturally. I don't need to see a trailer to know that like this show, like I know it's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm almost considering honestly rewatching some of the last episodes, maybe, maybe my favorite, especially I think it'd be fun if I watch season one, two, three, and four again, then watch this and maybe do like some of my favorite episodes or something. We'll see. Let me know in the comments below like, what's your favorite episode of Rick and Morty. I feel like if you're a fan of it, you have a favorite episode that stands out. All right, guys, now we are on to our top three. These are the top three media releases in June 2021 that I'm the most excited for. So let's talk about Loki. This show is pretty much, in my opinion, it's a surefire hit. Marvel Studios, uh, no bias, but like they've been on fire since the beginning, like since Iron Man in 2008. I was really impressed how good uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was. Was, and before that, WandaVision. So this year we've had two for two on um, Marvel. Like I said, not a lot of misses usually. And these shows were both great. And now Loki, one of the best characters in the MCU to get his own series. That's awesome. Uh, I'm really excited to just see what they do with this character. Uh, I love the idea of like what happened in Avengers Endgame when that version of Loki got out. Like that's so fun and so cool. And uh, Tom Hiddleston has done such a great job as Loki. This has been one of the best characters in all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Come on who's going to deny or disagree with it. Should be pretty awesome to see a whole series led by him. I, I heard it's going to have some uh, pretty major impacts on the uh, the world of the MCU. So I'm super stoked for another quality event television series on Disney Plus in the form of Loki. Here we are, guys, coming in at number two. It's Fast and the Furious 9 or F9. This is a film that I was like really so excited to watch in 2020. I think that this will be the movie that makes me go to a movie theater and actually go check it out. Because it's one of those movies that I love to just sit back in the recliner seat with some popcorn, have a good time, have a good laugh, watch some crazy action scenes, watch some of my favorite characters in all of movies. I mean, say what you want about Fast and Furious. It's a little over the top sometimes and it's just very, it's just big and stupid fun overall. I mean, Han is back. That's 
I I love that great character. Of course, we got John Cena. Why not playing as Jacob Dom's brother? I'm looking forward to that. Cipher's back. We have like this whole crew. We've got some more just fun stunts and action scenes. I mean, whatever you've seen in the trailer, bound to be a blast on the big screen. Fast and Furious Nine out of all the films coming out this summer is probably like my most anticipated, and I'm glad that we're finally getting it. Where are my gamers at? I've been talking about TV shows and movies this whole video. So how about Ratchet and Clank a rift apart? This game is going to be testing the PlayStation 5. This is going to be a real killer app. I think this is going to be a reason to have a PS5. Spider-Man Miles Morales is one of my favorite games, and I think that it really was an impressive showcase of the PS5, but that was also on PS4. This game is being exclusively developed for next gen because they're going to have the dual sense in mind. They're going to be pushing it to run and play the best it can. I'm so excited. Insomniac Games, yeah, speaking of Spider-Man, uh, they're kind of just on fire. Like they've just, it's good game after good game lately. Uh, I've loved Ratchet and Clank in 2016. If you guys don't know, it's literally one of my favorite games. It is one of the games that I got the platinum trophy and played through it like three times. I'd probably even play through it again if I didn't have all these other games on my backlog. It's getting really long. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to go back to it again, but uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is going to feel so fresh to me because I haven't touched a Ratchet and Clank since probably 2017. Cannot wait for this game. We've got new characters. We've got old characters. We've got all these crazy things, universe bending. We've got all classic weapons and brand new weapons. A lot of fun to be had. Ratchet and Clank are back and they are looking like they're going to be in their prime here. The game is going to be very impressive, I think. Like, I have a good feeling about it, just the way they've talked about it. I'm sorry to everybody who can't get a PS5 right now, but I'm blessed to have it and uh, I'm, I'm so excited. I think that Ratchet and Clank is just a great series. There's just so much fun to be had. It's a delightful experience. It's one that you can, uh, like I said, I grind it out and got the platinum trophy and enjoyed every minute of it. So I'm probably going to do the same with the sequel. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm very excited. How about you guys though? Be sure to comment below what media releases, whether it be a video game, a movie, a new season or a new series. Maybe it's an album or a book or something else. Just let me know in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's something that I've done a couple times, but I want to do more of these maybe more often. Just kind of a fun sit back. Let's make a list of what I'm looking forward to playing, doing, watching, etc. So that's pretty much it for me guys hope you enjoyed your time here consider subscribing if you want or don't uh, like this video if you enjoyed it i guess dislike it if you didn't and uh yeah that's gonna be it for me i'll see you guys all in the next video